I was very inspired by one of Tom Scott's videos the other day in which he was discussing whether YouTube is going to run out of these randomly assigned URLs that they give out when you upload a video. And I thought, well, I'd like to see if I could generate one of those random URLs using my old Commodore 64. And I think it sounds like an amazing adventure. And I thought, uh, you know, this is this is going to be great. I wanted to share this with you guys. So uh, let's have a look at what a standard YouTube URL actually looks like. If I'm going to head over to one of my favorite channels here for example the 8-bit guy and i'm going to look at perhaps his latest video this one in which he converts a pal commodore 16 to uh, 120 volts ntsc if we look at that url up here it starts quite simply with the protocol so https forward slash slash youtube.com forward slash watch question mark v equals and then here we have that phenomenal url that tom was going on about in his video and um, it appears it has one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven digits and these are made up of capital and non-capital letters as well as the numbers zero to nine so that's that's what we need we need uh, all uppercase all lowercase letters and uh, then we need the numbers zero to nine and uh, we need that 11 times behind each other so let's have a look how we do that on the commodore 64 here I've got an emulator, I'm using VICE, and uh, you can of course do that on a real Commodore 64 system, I just haven't got mine wired up right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, if you want to follow along with this, hit Control 2 to change that foreground color into white. So that's nice. And the other thing I want to do is because we're using uppercase and lowercase letters, I want to change my font to that very thing to uppercase and lowercase which on the c64 and many other commodore systems is done by pressing shift and the commodore key together and then it does that we're going to do all that in code as well but for now let's write a subroutine perhaps we'll start at line 100 and we're going to populate an array with all the characters that we need so um I'm just going to name that subroutine here and in line 110 I'm going to create, I'm going to dimension my array, I'll call it yt string. So I'll have an array of so many string characters and let's just have a think here, that's 26 characters a to z uppercase as well as lowercase so that is uh, 42 plus no 52 sorry and then i'm going to need 10 more for the numbers that is 62 so i'm going to dimension that with uh, 62 characters great so in line 120 i'm gonna this would be a great opportunity for a do while loop but we don't have that on, this, on the c64 so i'll just uh, start with a counter say i equals one line 130 well actually before we start before we continue coding is how do we set up this array well i know that there is an opportunity a possibility on the c64 to print characters not only by doing this so i can i can say print a and then i'll see an a i can also print the character string for a character so i could say something like uh, print character string 13 now we won't actually see much we only see a space in between here that's because character string 13 is just a carriage return but it's with these numbers that i can basically print any character but i can also find out which number i need to type in here if i have a character and that's the reverse version of the character string version which is asc or ascii string so i can say print asc of something like a small letter a which in this case is 65. so i could go i can expand this and go oh great and if that's the case uh, then um i like to see what an a is but i also want to see what a small z is for example and that is anything between 65 and 90. So now that I know that, I could go ahead and say print character string, uh, I've, 
90 and then I should get a small Z here, which is correct. Look at that. Perfect. So those numbers, let's remember those 65 and 90, anything between 65 and 90 needs to be part of the array. Then the same thing is also true for the uppercase letter. So let's try that again uh, with ASC uppercase A and ASC uppercase Z. And then I know those are the numbers 193 to 218. Okay, great. Let's take it one step further and print out everything from uh, number zero to a number nine. And that is anything between 48 and 57. Now, those numbers will help me if I keep designing my subroutine here now. So I think we were at uh, line 120. Is that true? Yes, that, well, I said i equals 1. So in line 130, I can start a for loop, in which case maybe I'll use the letter j for j equals, let's focus on the first group here, 65 to 90. So j equals 65 to 90. And in line 140, I'm going to populate my array, which I called yt string. of j with the character string of i okay so that we have sorry that's the wrong way around isn't it the yt string i character string j so that this first iteration would be this is at number one because i set i to one and character string of j is now 65 so that'll be a small letter a and on the second iteration in line 150 i'm going to make sure i'm going to increase i so i equals i plus one and in line 160 i'm going to say next j so then every iteration from 65 to 90 will populate my yt string array with an increasing character. So a small letter a, b, c, d, e, and so forth up until z. So then line 170 is basically the same as line 130. So let me just override that here. But I'm going to use different values for j. So in this case, I'm going to use the uppercase letters between 193 and 218. So I'll say 193 to 218. Perfect. And once I'm done with that, so that's also going to be true for line 180, and this is going to be 190, and this is going to be line 200. The excellent, excellent screen, what's it called, screen editor features of the Commodore Basic. Fantastic. So once we're done with that, we need to go and change line 210 to include these things to um, uh, from value 48 to 57. So J equals 48 to 57. And this is 220 and this is 230 and this is 240. And then in say 299, we're going to go and return. Well, let's see what that whole script looks like so far. So we're going to dimension the array to 62 characters. We're going to set i to the initial value of 1. And then we're going to iterate through a loop here, j65 to 90. That's the uh, small letters a to z. We're going to add that to our yt y string array. We're going to increase the counter. And we're going to keep going through that loop. Then we're going to go over the same process for the capital A to capital Z. And then lastly, we're going to do all that for the number 0 to 9. Okay, so in order to start our program, perhaps I will, uh, I will do that on line, uh, let's say, let's say line 20. So uh, first of all, I'm going to go to our subroutine to initialize our program. Then in line 30, I'm going to set a string to an initial value, say uh, nothing, for example. In line 40, I'm going to go ahead and uh, basically just 
iterate through that array and just print it out and see what we get. So uh, let's go and say for, I can say I can use i again because we, we no longer need i. i equals 1 to 62. And in line 50, I'm going to go and say print. Oh, no, sorry. In, in, uh, in line in here, I'm going to go and create a random number. So R and D, well, let's, let's call it a random number. Let's call it R N. And let's uh, use the integer of the R and D function times 62 plus 1. In fact, uh, doing that, I also need to initialize that. Perhaps I'll also go do that in line 20. So I'll also say x just a throwaway variable equals r and d minus ti whoops ti there we go we're not going to worry about that it's just so that the random number generator is kind of initialized internally and then it will generate uh, nice and even and, and, and random numbers from then on so great in line 60 i'm going to turn this random number into a random character from our yt string array and i'm going to add that to the end of the a string array so that i can then print out uh, uh, something uh, of 11 letters in fact you know this was this was wrong here because this should be 11 shouldn't it there we go one of those things so a string equals a string plus the um, yt string and the random number. There we go. In line 70, I'm going to go for next. And then in line 80, I'm going to print out our combined string. Perfect. And in line 90, because I like for this to happen multiple times, I'm going to go back and uh, go back to 30 and set a string to nothing again, and then iterate only through this loop again. I could alternatively type run, but then of course I would reinitialize the whole um, character array, and that'll just take you know forever, and uh, we can't speed up the the C64 considerably. So let's see if that is correct. So go to what did I say 30? Let's see what happens. Takes a moment to get started. And there we go. This is the 11 magic characters that will be generated at YouTube's end. So really what happens is you upload a video, one of the whatever thousands of servers responds to your upload request, and then that server generates, uh, much like with this script, a random string of characters. Your upload starts, and this server asks the central YouTube database, hey, does this exist? And the um, central computer will get back to this upload server and says, no, it doesn't exist. That's fine. Give it to the uploader. And at that, that moment, you will see it appear in your web browser. Or alternatively, YouTube will say, actually, no, that number already does exist. It's either already a public video, a private video, or it's a video that is unlisted. Please use another one. Then my server will go ahead and regenerate that string, and then it'll ask again until it gets the all clear from the central database. We could take this one step further and uh, just go and uh, format this a little bit nicer. So instead of setting a string to an initial value of nothing, we could always set it to https youtube.be forward slash, and then comes that number. So then you could actually just copy that and, and try it out in a browser. If the C64 would be web capable, this would be an opportunity for you to go and check. Is there actually a video there? And discover one of the, whatever Tom said, quintillion videos that could potentially be on there. And one other thing I'm going to do is when I print a string, I'm also going to uh, perhaps print a number so that we can, that we can see how many how many of these things have been generated. So for that, I'm also going to need to um, set up another counter. And I will perhaps call it um, CN. So set CN to 1. So in line 80, I'm going to go and say print 
cn colon and uh, another colon and a string and in fact uh, in here I'm gonna go and just go and put another print statement in there that if I do that then uh, we should see the whole URL and a space in between there and this is probably exactly what YouTube's infrastructure looks like you know several hundred rack mounted Commodore 64s that generate all this all day long or maybe not since this is a emulator I can also go and uh, increase the maximum speed of this machine a little bit so then uh, oh yeah what one thing I have forgotten is of course to increase this timer here this uh, this number so let me just uh, do that have to set that maximum speed back to 100% otherwise my typing isn't going to work so I'll do that but before I go to 30, I'm going to go up perhaps in line 85. I'm going to go and say uh, CN equals CN plus 1. There we go. And if we run that, then we're going to have an increase in the generated amounts of URLs here. That was it. I hope this was helpful. Uh, check out Tom's video and find out when YouTube are going to run out of URLs that are that are randomly assigned and uh, check out the code for this in the description if YouTube lets me post it or on GitHub I'll post a link to uh, that GitHub repository as well. If you like this video of course share it with friends, family and total strangers and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you next time. Bye bye.